Hey, hey, hey. It's Wednesday night. Do you know what that means? It's time for the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show. America has spoken. We bring you now the number five rated bass fishing talk show in the galaxy. Ladies and gentlemen, Stray yes. Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. Up happens, to number five. Happens now. Up to number five, Poppy. Yes. Kicking ass. That's how we do it. Yeah. That's how we talk show. That's how you bass talk That's show. That's how you bass talk show. I'm your, I'm your host, Pat Renwick, and, uh, and, and I just want to tell you, every Wednesday night I get all kinds of pumped up and excited about talking to some of the best bass fishermen in the galaxy, and especially proper bass and men like this dude, making his triumphant return to the Stray Cash Show. Give it up for Bill Lowen. Yes. yes. Bill Lowen. Coming on tonight, and I, I always go to uh, to our producer, Andrew Ellenberger, for a, for a consensus. How many times do you think this is for Billy? At least four. At least four times. Oh, yeah. yeah. Since our inception. Correct. So th this is his uh, quadrumptant. Multiple inceptions. His yeah. As they would say uh, in, in ancient Egypt, uh, quadrumptant. Quadrumptant. Yes. This is his quadrumptant appearance. That's Bill correct. Lowen, um, kicking butt this year. Great 2019. Yeah. Um, pretty excited to have this guy on. I'm glad that he finally returned my phone calls. He had me on block <laughs> for a while. But, I'm, but it's all good. I just wanted advice on oil changes. That's yeah. all. I just kept blowing him up. I was like, Bill, my that'll truck be, says, do I need you. an oil change? But then I wanted to call Bill to make sure it really needed an oil change. I, that's all I'm saying. Yep. But anyway, let's go around the horn. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this guy right here, they call him the old catfish. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan Popcorn, the drummer Whitaker. Hey. He's got a giant mouth, apparently. I used to have a giant mouth. Did your mouth shrink as you grew no, up? No, my head grew into it. I just learned that Ryan's nickname was Catfish. It was. Uh, back in his uh, early days. Like Cooley? In his yes, sir. In his, yeah, like Catfish Cooley. <laughs> in his fingerling days. Yeah. When you were just a little uh, fingerling. Yeah, it was. I think when it started, I was 86-pound catfish. 86-pound catfish. That's pound, what yeah. they call That's them. a good one, bro. <laughs> so that's that's like, back. That's the kind that live at the dam. You yeah. know what I mean? They live that's probably way eight years old under 10. the dam right there. Yeah. Yes. I had a Michael Strahan gap between my teeth, too. It was pretty solid. <laughs> that's amazing. So Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Catfish Whitaker. I have no longer popcorn. Nope. I need a new emoji AKA. for him. AKA the catfish. It's fine. <laughs> I'm fine with all of it. Speaking of catfish, you know who really knows how to sniff them out? Let's talk about our intern. Ladies and gentlemen, it's college Danny Mohan. Hey yes, there. sir. Yep. What's up, Danny? Not much, man. Been doing well. It's a Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. It's been a, it's been a good run. Honestly, been uh, really great shows recently. How are you liking being an intern at Stray oh, Cast? Ten out of ten, absolutely great. What's the worst no part about man. being an intern at Stray Cast? Um, nothing. Nothing. Wow, uh, just great. Amazing great. answer. Yeah. Huh. And you get to sit next to JP High. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for the OG Birthday Month Hip Hop Fisherman, JP High. JP High. Wow, he's dynamite. JP High. He never loses a fight. Used to be the Lord of the Ned Rig. Now he's just back to being a good old half ounce jig fisherman. It's JP High, the half ounce jig fisherman. Indiana Hoosier. Official Hoosier. Hoosier. Yes. Ho Ho Hoosier. Yeah, Ho JP. Yeah. How do you like being a Hoosier? JP, the Hoosier. Exclusive. So, so far, it's kind of boring. Why is it boring, <laughs> JP? <laughs> I, I want to know why it's boring. I love Indiana. It's just not the city. My life is amazing, JP. Where do I live? Indiana. Do you ever see a dull moment in my life? <laughs> no. Okay. I, so Actually, no. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. Life is what you make of it. True that. JP, I True need you that. to carpe day the diem and seize the balls. You know what I mean? Sick balls. You're not close to the they lake say. now, but you're, you're still pretty close to the lake. Yeah, JP, you and you got a that. pond at your house. You can't cast from your window anymore, though. Yeah. Yeah, let's go fishing, guys. Yeah. I, that's what I'm saying, JP. Let's just go right now. But you gotta sometimes you gotta I'll call people and say, hey, <laughs> Pat, you going fishing today? You yeah. know what I mean? And then no. instead of moping around the house, I'm out there jacking them. And, and you're like, man, this is boring. I know. Nobody wants to play <laughs> with me. Nobody <laughs> wants to play bass fish with me. All I wanted to do was live in the city and be a smallmouth guy. But somehow, I ended up in the streets of Munster, Indiana. And now, 
I'm the half ounce jig fisherman. I used to be the Lord of the Net Rank. The heck is going on in this subhuman race? You were doing a little Adam Sandler there, I see. I, I was. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the equation Knights. You, you lost me, man. <laughs> that was the intention. You... <laughs> I lost you at Albuquerque. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Speaking of Albuquerque, <laughs> step by step, slowly he turns, ladies and gentlemen. You know him. He's the punk rock producer. <laughs> Andy. Yo. J- jump into the crowd. Stage dive. Do it. You can do it, Andy. Later. Jump. Later. Jump into the crowd. Might as well. Crazy. Right. Hey, guys, Bill Owen's coming on tonight. It's awesome. Pretty excited about Bill Owen. Can't wait to talk deep cranking. <laughs> he is a deep cranking <laughs> expert. Here he, here, here he puts Wes that's in what oil. He, that's what he does. The old, do you remember the remember old? when I asked him what he deep cranks with? <laughs> and he's like, I don't deep crank. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's like when KVD Stupid. told you to shut up. He did. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. He told me I good. suck. <laughs> 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 he wasn't having it. Speaking of not sucking, uh, Stray Cast is famous on Wednesday nights for not sucking in the art of giving out free stuff. So tonight, in Ooh. true, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Tonight, in uh, true Stray Cast glorified version of a bass fishing talk show tradition, we're going to give away uh, what demo? What, Danny Mohan? Oh, tonight we are giving away $50 worth of line and lure, courtesy of J.P. High. <laughs> yes. He's giving away his personal stash, so good stuff. Wow. Got a garage full they're of that spe- stuff. He's, Maybe they should get Chip Goy's personal stash of line and lure. <laughs> Chip Goy, he's, he's he drank busy. it all. It yeah, he's too busy drinking One it. Time. Why, yeah. Yeah, why is he drinking that? Uh, what's going on? <laughs> I would never put he him up to it, that. Man. I would never put him up to that. He said it makes his voice a little more slick. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. But for real, all you have to do is like and share the live Facebook feed, okay? Take it off private. Like and share. At the end of the show, J.P. High, the hip-hop fisherman, the birthday month guy, is going to pick a winner. One of you lucky viewers out there tonight, bass fishing fans, is going to win 50 bucks. We're the line and lure conditioner. That's right. I'm not even kidding about this. Not even kidding. And yeah, it's real stuff, Jim. And and they uh, Isaac is awesome. They usually throws in extra goodies. Yeah. Like I know the people that get prizes from line and lure. There's like I don't BTS, know. BTS, everything. Yeah, yeah, cocktail shrimp. You know the kind everything. that never go bad to come yeah. in the red sauce yeah. in the little jar. He throws those in. Too. An application rag. Uh, yes, application <laughs> rags are very yes. important. Those come in there too. Also, Vienna sausages. He sends. What I think there's yeah. like a there's a theme there of food that doesn't go bad. No expiration date food. That's included in the package. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Owen, Bassmaster Elite Series angler, line and lure giveaway, and so much more. Put the power poles down. I'm Pat Renwick, and I'm coming right back. Along with Ryan, Danny, JP, and Andy. your game. It has been said that professionals are only as good as the tools they work with, and Alpha Angler has developed the ultimate set of tools for you, the competitive angler. Alpha Angler Custom Rods, brought to fruition by the passion of Master Craftsman Jake Boomer and 2017 BASS Angler of the Year Brandon Palinick. Alpha Angler Rods are custom made in the USA designed and engineered to be perfect. Alpha Angler utilizes a very unconventional approach to making the very best bass rods from drop shotting to flipping. Alpha Angler's focus is on building perfectly balanced tournament grade bass rods at an affordable price. Join the Alpha Lusion today and purchase direct at alphaangler.com. Step up your game, alphaangler.com. Hey guys, Micah Frazier here. I've got a bait from War Eagle Baits called the Buzz Toad. 
Big thing lately has been putting a toad style bait on a buzz bait, and preferably it's my favorite way to fish one. Uh, this bait here's got a quick planing head, a great hook, and it squeals right out of the package. Uh, the, the body of this bait is big and bulky, so it allows you to skip it. It, it planes quicker than a skirted bait would. Um, in my opinion, it's just the way to, it's the way to fish a buzz bait. So y'all check this thing out. It's pretty awesome. The TH Marine Hydrowave H2 KVD Edition is a surefire way to ignite a feeding frenzy. The Hydrowave utilizes a sound emitting technology that imitates bait fish and other feeding fish below the surface that preys on the competitive nature of bass and other game fish to get you more bites. The Hydrowave is another way that TH Marine has you covered from transom to trolling motor. This angler cut his teeth in the tough conditions of the Ohio River Valley. The 13-year Elite Series veteran, nine-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier, an astonishing 148 top tens. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you Bassmaster Elite Series. Hell of a guy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Bill Owen. Woo! Yes. Thank you for having me, guys. What's up, Bill? Oh, nothing, man. Just hanging out with you guys. Just hanging out. How, how you? How, yeah, absolutely. How, are you feeling good, man? Um. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to be hunting or doing something right now, but feeling pretty good. Wow. Oh, wow. He just did you? He's like, <laughs> rather be doing something else, but I'm on your dumb bass fishing talk show, Pat. <laughs> I, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant in general. We'd rather be fishing too. We would too. Why ain't gonna kid you? <laughs> but no, man, it's great that it's great to have you back on the uh, on the show. You can see us and hear us, okay, and everything. Absolutely. Oh, and you can and you you heard your amazing vintage Bassmaster intro, the Bob Cobb days. I, I did. It makes me feel like I've been fishing for about fifty years. That was the intent. <laughs> that that was the intent, and you know, in I'm glad you said that because to us in this room, that's myself, Ryan, Danny, JP, and Andy, we feel like you have been, let's just put it straight out, we feel that you have legend status, that you have achieved le legend status, at least yes, to sir. us anyway, okay? And I say that respectfully, um, we mean that, and sincerely, we mean it, man. Well, first off, I'd like to know what it takes to achieve that legend status. Well, well, first off, <laughs> just vacuum up some bass. I man. mean, let's let, let's look at it. Okay, you it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thirteen years on the tour, consistent, consistent, consistent. All right, that's you, man. That's you. All right, shallow, 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 Sh shallow, shallow, shallow. We nine, all like to do that. Nine too. Bassmaster Classic qualifying qualifiers. Ten now. Ten now. Ten. ten. Yeah. Ten, sorry about ten, that. Ten now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
the big G-Ville. All right. I mean, come on. Do I need do I need more? More consistency? Um, I mean, you when people think of shallow water fishing, they think of Bill Lowen. I mean, is there do I need to say more? Nah, you know what? I think you I think you nailed it. You know, I just I guess I'm such a humble person that I don't I don't look at it like that. You know what I mean? You and I have talked a lot about that in the past and uh I just feel like one of the guys, you know what I mean? I, I've told you many times when I said this, I never wanted to be uh, the best angler in the world. Uh, I want to be the best ambassador for the sport that I can be. And, uh, you know, I guess I just never feel like um, the best angler in the world. You know what? But I do feel like one of the best ambassadors for the sport out there. Absolutely, Bill. And, and I mean, let's think about this, man. The inaugural season of the Elite Series, you were there. I mean that that was it. What was it? Absolutely. That was 06, right? 06. That was was that your first yep. year too? Yeah, very first year, 06. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yep. So 06 is when is when you came in into the game, man, and and here we find ourselves uh in an eternity later, okay? 50 years later we find ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but but yes, man, and I I mean that, man. You to us you have achieved legend status. You are a staple or an icon of the sport. I don't think anybody can disagree with me. You are a proper bassin man. Well, man. yes sir. Yeah. Well, I I really really appreciate it. And I'm glad that you're returning my texts and calls now cuz you had me on block for a while. What did I do? What what what, what did I do? Uh, you know, I know how much of a jokester you are, so I was just <laughs> pulling a little trick on you. <laughs> you gave me a little Bugs Bunny back, didn't you? You're just pulling a two-year right, prank. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I wanna, I wanna ask you about you, how you see you, Bill Owen. Okay, so let's go to 2006, the inaugural season of the Elite Series, in your first season at bat, first time to the plate. I want to know, basically, describe your personality at that time as an angler, as well as a a civilian. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, at the same. You know, I mean, uh, you know, as, as a professional angler. Let's th- let's talk about your attitude, your your outlook on life in 2006 as an angler and in life. All right. Are you following me? Absolutely. Okay. Well, and, tell me, uh, tell me you how know, you're feeling. Well, to be totally honest with you, in 06, I was scared to death. Okay. Um, you know, I, I mean, naturally, like anybody else would be. And, uh, you know, I was newly married. You know, we got rid of our house and we put everything we owned in a pods facility and we moved into my parents' basement. <laughs> um, and I took off on the road. You know, I, I took off for the first you know, we had like three back-to-backs, and I took off on them by myself again, stayed at home just because I didn't have any idea what I was getting into, and I wanted to be, you know, 110% focused. Um, and, uh, you know, I took off, and uh, if I can remember correctly, I made the first five cuts of my professional career, and I can remember, you know, that was like $60,000 that I won, and I can remember – walking in the Bass Pro Shop and thinking, boy, this is awesome because now I can buy two bags of worms instead of one. Um, <laughs> you don't have to be cheap know, no but, more, do you? <laughs> um, it was, uh, you know, it, it, I guess it probably wasn't until my second or third, maybe even my fourth year where I felt like um, I'd really made it. But that first year, um, you know, like I said, I was scared to death, didn't know what was going to happen. And all my buddies were saying, you know, how are you going to go on a tour? and compete you know you've really never been anywhere away from home you don't know a lot about fishing deep and i said you know what i, t- I told jennifer i said look i'm gonna go fish my style i'm right. gonna fish shallow if, if it doesn't work out i don't need to be there um and i didn't i didn't stray from that one bit i mean i, I hit the freaking road running and that's what i did i fished shallow all year and if i remember right i finished 25th or 26 in the points and qualified for my uh, very first classic, um, fishing my style. And that's a weight. Um, that's a weight yeah. off the shoulders, man. I mean. Absolutely. Well, you know, and then, you know, to, to touch on that a little bit, my second year, I did not fish my style. I tried to fish the dot talk and oh. things like that. Okay. I had the first, the, I had the worst finish of my career. Um, I believe I finished 50th or 60th in the points. And, uh, you know, since then, 
I've tried to play my game, um, and it's worked out pretty good. What flicked that switch? We're, what what flicked that? What made you try that the second year? I mean, you had a successful first year. What was the what was the draw that you're like? Okay, I need to be more versatile, or I mean, like why? Well, you know, you just see them guys that are out there, you know, fishing deep and you know, cranking big plugs, uh, which I know nothing about. Uh, <laughs> it's big <laughs> peer pressure. Throw, you know, throw, throwing big swim baits and things like that, and I just, I, I just felt like maybe there was something that I was missing. Um, and I guess that's probably why I did that. Okay. I, uh, I, you were trying to fill a void that maybe didn't need to be filled. Well, and I, I feel like you downplayed right. that the whole first year, you know, having to leave home and going far away from home. You had to go about as far away from your home as possible in this country <laughs> exactly. for your first tournament. Quite right? a drive. Amistad? Right. I mean, that's God, that's like a world away. And you're like, yeah, first big derby. Or not your first big derby, but first Elite Series derby. Yeah. You know, and you pulled. It's I think crazy. you were like in the top half of the field too in that derby. You're like top forty or something. I think uh, was that uh, Lake Amistad? Is that correct? Yeah, I yeah. Know, yeah. But I believe so. Yeah. Um, you know that 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 tournament kind of sticks out in my head because that was one of the events where I did good in that event swimming a jig, uh, <laughs> and I can figure. remember Rick, I can remember I can remember Rick Clun fishing out in front of me, and uh, I can remember him coming up to me at the end of the event saying. Hey boy, what was you doing in there? <laughs> said, well, sir, that's great. I was, I was swimming a jig, and he said, "Well, I'd like to ask you a few questions about that." And me not knowing no better, I spilled my beans to Rick Clun about swimming a jig, which that, uh -oh. awesome. I wish he'd swim. I wish he'd spill his beans to me about cranking a little bit. But, well, what did he uh, ask yeah, you? Here like, you go, Wolf. Let me sharpen your teeth for you. Yeah. yeah. What's What's a question? Yeah. Do you remember like what how he was picking your brain? Well, it was everything. He kind of put that Rick Clun voodoo on me. He <laughs> did the like line, color, size, retrieve, everything in about thirty seconds, and I just you didn't even know what hit you. My beans to him. It was like a Jedi yeah. mind trick, <laughs> right? It was exactly. I am what not it was. the Jedi that you have heard of in these parts. And that was a boom it was right there. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, let's jump ahead. Okay, two thousand six. Now let's jump to present day. Present day. What, what happened? When? Sorry, Paul Benson asked a pretty funny question. Well, then go ahead. I, I, it's got to be good if it's from Paul. Paul Benson wants to know what your favorite drop shot setup is. <laughs> 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 I mean, is that the question of the week? I think Paul gets the prize. That's pretty fantastic right there. <laughs> <laughs> he, I think he, he down shots is what Bill does. Yeah, you know, you, know, you know, over the years of being on the elites, you know, I don't get a drop shot out much, except for, you know, typically when we go up north and chase some big brownies. Yeah. Um, but I've grown kind of fond of it. You know what I mean? I really like really? catching them on it. Um, it's just a kind of a change of pace. There yeah. you go, Paul Benson. That's his favorite drop shot. Rick. Wow. <laughs> right there. <laughs> That's outstanding. Uh, this just in, Bill Lowen drop shot techniques on Stray Cass. All right, Bill, let's get to 2019, where we are, present day. Mano y mano. Here it is. How do you feel now? Where is your your confidence level? Where is your 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 you know basically your feelings about bass fishing? How do you feel now compared to 2006? Well, you know, I think anytime you have a good year and you catch them, your confidence is through the roof. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to say that my confidence has ever been down. Um, you know, and the last few years for me have kind of been. Um, I don't want to stay a struggle um, just because, you know, I've still had some good seasons and some good finishes, but the last few years I found myself not fishing my style or fishing my game. Um, and, you know, I can use some tournaments from last season as example that I never even went up the rivers on at some of the tournaments. And, you know, I mean, typically that's the very first thing I do right. and I never went up the river. Um, so I just kind of stepped back this year and said, you know, you know why? Because Rick Clun did something to you way back, and and every once in a right. while. So the second year, we saw the first example where you got into mm -hmm. the doc talk. He he put that in your brain right there, and then now this year again, right? The, the later on, see what he did? Dang it, Rick! Yes, sorry. You know, so I so I just I just look back at the last few years and think, man, you made some really stupid calls, and I told myself this year, didn't matter what happened. 
weather, floods, 50 mile an hour winds. Um, I was going to fish shallow. I was going to fish my game. Um, and it worked pretty much to perfection till the last two events of the season. Um, and uh, that's what killed my season. I don't want to say it killed it, but, you know, at, at one point I had an opportunity to maybe make a really good run at Angler of the Year. Sure and, did. Uh, these last two, last two events just – but bit me in the butt, man. Yeah, and I th- and I I know Ten Killer was a a tough event, uh, but I I kind of thought you know I, I don't know I was expecting more from you. I don't I don't know how else to say. Well, I was I was expecting more from myself too, you know. And like I said, I stuck with that shallow game all year long. And you know, for a lot of people out there, they don't know that that lake drops close to three foot wow. during the event. Um, so you know. When that water starts falling like that, it typically, you know, it's tough on that shallow bite, but I stuck with it. And, uh, you know, I, I made a, a, a call during the second day of that event. You know, I had three little spotted bass in the box, and um, I caught a fourth one, and I, I clipped his gill when he was bleeding. And I knew Ooh. if I threw him in there that he was going to die. Um, and, and, then, and then, for whatever reason, I said, you know what, what are you doing catching these spots? They're not going to do you any good. So I took off down the lake largemouth fish, and I ended up catching a largemouth that was about three pounds. Um, so at the end of the day, I only had four, and I missed the third day cut by about eight ounces. Ooh, so yeah. had I just put had I just put that little spot in there, um, you know, it, it would have changed the outcome of that event. But I went with the decision that I thought, you know, what I mean, I well, learned a long time ago. You did what you thought was you right. Don't second, yes, typically you should never second guess yourself when right. your gut tells you to do something. And bass fishing, typically for me, um, that's what I do because it always works out. Great piece of advice because, yeah. uh, I mean, I think about every time that we don't listen to us, that true inner voice, it doesn't it doesn't end up well. Yeah, that inner voice is all your experience. Yeah, it is. It's everything you've learned. Yeah. It, uh, who was it describing it? Uh, um, it might have been. It might have been. Uh, last week describing it. Or no, it was Seth yeah, describing Seth, yeah. it as the gut. Yep. So as your gut gets bigger, that's the bass fishing gut, not from the biscuit and gravy buffet. That's the bass brain. But yeah, but <laughs> as that gut gets bigger and expands, that's the knowledge. All right, that's the the expansion of the knowledge of, yes. of the the bass and gut. And um, and Bill, you got the bass and gut. I mean, <laughs> and I mean in a good way. <laughs> no, no, you no. know, you know, I've always always truly tried to listen to my gut um and and i know that when i don't um typically it bites me yeah and so here we go now and i want to ask you this question you hear this a lot about bill lowen and i want to and i say this with respect does it ever bother you when people say that's the best angler that's never won a tournament does that upset you or does it motivate you or both (sighs) you know it's uh I guess that's something that just weighs on you. You know what I mean? It's because I've been close so many times and had so many opportunities um, to, to get that blue trophy. Um, but on the other side of that, um, I, I try not to let that bother me. You know what I mean? Um, look, it doesn't do any good to worry about things that you basically have no control over. You know what I mean? When it's your time, um, it's your time. You know, I've sure. always tried prided, prided myself on being – um, one of the most consistent anglers on tour, um, you know, and, and you know what, like I told you in the beginning of this show, uh, my whole goal when this started was to be the best ambassador that I could be and not the number one fisherman in the world. And you're doing an amazing uh, job of it. Yep. Um, awesome. Like I'm doing that, um, to the best of my abilities. And, uh, you know what, if, if, if a win never comes, will I be upset? Absolutely. I'd be upset, but, um, I'm not going to let that rule my life and be the, you know what I mean? Um, I'm just going to keep doing what I do and um, pass it on and, uh, you know, try, like I said, just try to be the best ambassador for the sport that I can be. A- absolutely. And it's you, coming, man. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, and they say that a person is due for a win. I don't necessarily know that I like that saying due for a win, but, man, I mean, I just mm-hmm. think it's, it's almost uh, – a matter of time because of your consistency. You know what I mean? Like you could have been around for 13 years and not been the most outstanding angler. And we might not say, well, it's going to happen, you know, but because of your consistency, that's, that's the point. That's the driver right there. 
you know. So with that being said, well, go ahead, Bill. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. So with, with that being said, into 2020, you guys got a pretty cool schedule. I mean, in front of you for 2020 at some great times, right? I mean, set up. Yeah, it's uh, set up good. It's looking pretty. It's 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 looking pretty good for a for a shallow water guy. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I got. I know you love Champlain. Is that like? Well, let's just put it this way. Pick one of those lakes. Like, what's Bill's Lake for 2020 in the Elite Series schedule? The chick. Oh man, if I, Champlain. If I had to pick one, I'm gonna go with. Uh, the Sabine River. The Sabine River. Okay. And I kind of, I kind of <laughs> thought maybe. Nice. Nice. I mean, of course, it, it fits your style. And and so it's something on your mind. If you're thinking 2020, that Sabine is the tournament that kind of is knocking at you right now. Well, you know, I, I love any event where I feel like half the field's beat before we even start, you know, because it's, it's a <laughs> tough fishery. It's, mm -hmm. it's tidal. Um I love those events where it just it gets in guys' heads, you know what I mean? Um, you know, we talk about this a lot. I grew up where I'm accustomed to getting five or six bites a day. You know, most of these guys are used to getting 50 or 60 bites a day just because of, the, you know, where they live at and where, you know, where they fish at all the right. time. Um, so typically for me, mine is 10 killer this year. The tougher, the better. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? I truly struggle um, in those slugfests. Um but I can 12 pound you to death. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a grinder, man. You're a grinder. Um, I want to talk about um, a couple Bill Lowen special moments to the Stray Cast crew, okay? But, oh, we got a special announcement, I think. this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah don't forget that. Yeah, th there is a special announcement. Yeah. This just in. Like and share the Facebook feed, and Bill Lowen will give away $1 bill to the first 5,000 shares. <laughs> First 5,000 shares, Bill Lowen is giving away a dollar bill. True story I just made Thanks. up. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. No problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when I, I think I was I was emceeing a Bass University or something? These guys reminded me of it today. Yeah, at Kokomo. At Kokomo. And, and I was like, ladies and gentlemen, up next, Bill Lowen. He's giving away a dollar bill to the first 500 people through the door. They were, yeah, they were yeah. bu busting down the doors to get up to see Bill Lowen. We packed your seminar. <laughs> We were looking for your wallet there. <laughs> <laughs> you sure were. You were holding me upside down, shaking for change, I remember. Right. <laughs> but, I, want, I mean, I want to talk about a couple of special Bill Owen moments to us. And I one that, that sticks in my brain is that Potomac River <laughs> tournament. Okay, I think it was a, like a fourth. We were talking about it before. The, 2016. The, yeah. the, the Potomac River Derb, 2016. Uh, it was like a fourth place finish, right? Uh, Sound right? Yes, I believe so. Flipping, Some, yeah, somewhere. Flipping in a creek, flipping in a creek. Um, Perfect. Are we thinking of the Potomac River? Or are we thinking of the Chesapeake Bay? No, the we're thinking. One? No, we're thinking Potomac River. Well, that, that's we'll where get him, to that. Yeah, him and I were confusing each other <laughs> with both of those two tournaments. Now, yeah. okay. I remember okay. watching the footage of you in a creek in the Potomac, and you were flipping some little bait and just wrecking them, wrecking them, bro. That's that's the Bill Loman moment to me. You don't even remember that moment? Oh, I remember it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure we was on the right right page, right body of water. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And just the spot looked so Bill Lowen. I mean, where you were at that spot was perfect. You were in there. I believe you were flipping a little creature bait or something, and uh, and and just tearing them up, dude. You were having so much fun. <laughs> yeah, you know that was a, that was a really good event. Um, and once again, that was one of those tough events, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it seems like, I don't know if it's coincidental or whatever it may be. It just seems like whenever I get in the, get in that position to maybe have an opportunity to win, there's always this big mountain to climb. You know what I mean? Like Justin had a big, big lead there and, um, you know, it was a big mountain to climb. Same deal with, you know, that Chesapeake Bay event that Aaron had a big, big lead and I had a big mountain to climb there as well. And, uh. You know, but that that tournament was a lot of fun. I caught a ton of fish, and most of the fish I caught come out of that one little tiny creek. It was awesome. It was awesome. And then and then Ryan's that, moment was yeah, the, the the Chesapeake Bay one. Uh, you're just referring to that one is just fat, some of the best spinner bait bites I've ever yes. seen on tape. <laughs> that one, I I I watched that one back so many times that year. I mean, DVR in that one, and just I think I watched that tournament seven eight times. 
honestly. Is it weird we so that we like fish is, is it weird that we like slow motion bass <laughs> catch <laughs> replay? My girlfriend <laughs> thinks it's weird. For it's sure. Like, oh my god, watch Bill Lowen's flipping this one in on a spinnerbait. Yeah. It's awesome. Look at the wake. You Our can see him waking like, on it. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, oh uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's weird at all. I just think that truly shows how much you guys love the sport. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Because uh, most people would think you're crazy, and I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I do the same thing. So. <laughs> nice. You sold me a lot of them spinner baits. I'll tell you that much. I had to call. I had to call three, four different guys to get permission to buy those things or something like that. I remember it was it was pretty weird, but is that it, thing was is that thing is awesome. Top love secret. But yeah, I think that, what it is, you guy, know, the guy that the guy that built that builds that spinner bait, you know, pretty much called me up and said, I don't know what you've done, but I can't build them fast enough. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had to wait uh, probably two months to get them. He was like, we're a little backed up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get you some. I had to send them a check and everything. Oh, yeah, in advance. In advance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All that. Hey. But, I, but I think I think what it is, what you're talking about, is th- those tournaments stick out to me because, I mean, I like to fish shallow. So, But seeing that, I think everybody likes that. As much as we like seeing a guy catch 300 smallmouth out deep, those shallow bites, it's just so much more fun to watch. It's intimate. It's like watching a, a you know a high scoring baseball game versus a pitcher's duel. You know, you get a lot right. of action going on and those those fish you know, catches to, are amplified. To, right. To me it's more more like hunting than fishing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um and, and when I'm in them type areas attacking that stuff, um, I want to catch every fish that's in there swimming. You know, and, and yeah. it, you guys have watched me enough fish to know how I dissect cover and pick on it you know if there's 10 fish in that tree i'm gonna catch at least nine of them <laughs> you know um, you know and i think that's a big mistake that a lot of guys make um when they're fishing shallow you know they just naturally when a lot of guys when they're fishing shallow they're power fishing and they're on you know they're on high and they're going really fast and you know i don't i typically don't have a problem fishing behind anybody um, because I know my style and I know how I'm going to. You're better. You're better than most. Cover. I'll tell you that because it bothers well, me. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't want to say I'm better, but I feel like I got a lot more. Well, no, better in the brain. You know let's I mean? put it that way. Better right, in exactly. the head. That because it drive me nuts. Hey, do, uh, do you know, you know uh, Bill? You know we're we're kind of big time now, right? Like since you've been on the show, yeah. right? I mean, we're the number fifth oh, rated. Yeah. We're number fifth rated bass fishing talk show in the galaxy. Five. Yeah. yeah. Well, not, not I Im- told you, you know, that you just forgot about me and forgot who I was, and you know, and you invited me like in '07, and and then what did I call you are. directly after <laughs> you? S- directly we after you said later. that to me, what did I call you? I don't remember. I called you an ass. That's what I called you. <laughs> I was gonna say I, I probably I probably can't say that. <laughs> it's internet. And it's, say whatever you yeah, want. It's all. But anyway, we have an intern now. Do you believe that we actually have an intern? All right, and it's hey, you're. You, Big time. That's what I'm saying. His his name's Danny Mohan. He fishes for the Purdue Lafayette college team. Indiana boy. Nice. All right. Nice. And Danny has a favorite Bill Owen moment too. He wants to share with you. He's a little unclear on it, so you might have to put yeah. some pieces together. Yeah, for him. Bill. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember a clip of you. I'm uh, not sure how long ago it was. You were on Smith Lake, I believe, and you pulled up to a dock. And you caught like six in a row, like five minutes span. You caught six flipping underneath this dock. One of which I think it was like your third one was about six or seven pounder. <laughs> was what was that? That was, that was Lake Lanier. Lake Lanier. Lanier. Oh, okay, was close. <laughs> Spotted bass. I was close. I was close. Same but region. You, he was catching largemouth though. He was he okay. was on uh, Lanier catching largemouth. What uh? Can you walk us through that though? I mean, I remember <laughs> I saw the video. You pulled it right up, and I mean, it was like six in a row almost, like boom, boom, boom. He knew they were there. Well, that was that was the first day of the event, and when I pulled up to that dock, it was about one o'clock in the afternoon, and up to that point, I had one little keeper spot bass in the box, um, and I just, you know, what I mean, it's late first day. You just already know that you've just screwed this tournament totally up, and I had that one dock that I had one bite off of in practice. Um, you know, so here's kind of another one of those little tips, um, that I'm going to give you, man, you, when you, you, you pull up to a piece of cover like that, and this dock was unique in that it had a beaver hut underneath of it that oh, you couldn't God. see. Oh. I, I noticed oh. that. <laughs> juicy. That's the juice. Where, you know, so the beaver, um, you could see a couple sticks, but he had, a, he'd start building him a little den or whatever in there and the water came up on it. And my very first pitch to that dock, I get a bite and it's a keeper spot, you know, so I put the talons down. Yep. Go back and drop him in the box, and and as you saw, I sat there and started working on that 
you know, on that piece of cover. And I think Wait I caught, minute. I caught eight, eight or nine, and eight or nine cast. Um, and one of them was, you know, a six something that ended up being um, big bass of the event, you know. But a lot of guys would have would have made a couple casts of that dock and maybe took off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mm-hmm. literally made the same exact pitch nine times to catch nine fish or however many it was, but it was, it was a pretty phenomenal deal. Um, you know, and I'd caught three or four more fish that I weighed in over the next two days off that one dock as well. Unbelievable. That's awesome. Yeah. That's That's phenomenal. I mean, I I saw that clip. He was just putting the hammer down in the same spot. I mean, he'd pitch it in, boom, fish, pitch it in, boom, fish. Little hotel. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're giving up too much. You get one bite, just move on. Just keep going. Everybody. (laughs) Yeah. They don't group up. They never group in shallow water. Never group. No. Andy, how about you? How about a favorite Bill Lowen movie for our movie? Movie? How about your, what's your favorite Bill Lowen movie, Andy? I liked him in Sandlot, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the great Bilbino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, anyway? Mine is, I, it, I believe it's a 16 classic at Cherokee. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he sticks that seven pounder, and you and the marshal just going nuts and just <laughs> living in that moment and the excitement. It's just awesome. I mean, that's yes. what it's about. Yes. And right, it's just the exactly. pure joy coming out of him. I mean, he's just fishing and just loving it. That's it's, awesome. It was just awesome. You know, typically I don't get very excited on the water, but there's some times that um, you just got to let it all out. You, you got to let it all out. Speaking of letting it all classic, out, man. You, you know um, the hip-hop fisherman, J.P. High, our guy back here. He, he, right? he, he's a big fan of yours, and he, he has a favorite Bill Owen moment also. What's it, what's your favorite Bill Owen moment, J.P.? What's up, Bill? I, uh, what's going on, buddy? Everyone else's was like kind of fishing-related. Mine was more... You were at a sports show. I know what you're going to say. And uh, Ryan was doing a seminar. You were watching Ryan's seminar. And before he was finished, you were over trying to buy jigs from us. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. It was just amazing how, <laughs> how quick you were there. And I think I think we turned you down. Yeah, well, no, no. You got it mixed up a little bit. Yeah. I was at Bo- – I was at – We were there. Uh, we were there. <laughs> now, that was in Chicago. Now, the first time was in – Ryan had like we were at dinner. I think it was it was uh, with Phil Hunt and Mario and yeah, we were at the all, beef place. Yeah, we were all at the beef place. Bill devoured the beef sandwich. Yes, it was amazing. All right, so but like Ryan was like, "Hey, look at these jigs that me and JP make," and you really liked them. They were cool little finesse <laughs> jigs. And Ryan had a whole box of the damn things. I did not. You know, a whole damn box, did. like 36 dozen of them in a box. <laughs> and Bill's like, uh, and, you know, you think Ryan, you didn't ask for any, Bill. You didn't ask. <laughs> but you think Ryan would be like, oh, here's an elite guy, likes yeah. the jig I make. Maybe I'll throw the cat a few. <laughs> here's Man, two. I'll throw the guy a bone here. You know? You're from yeah, Chicago. Like, hey, buddy. Hey, hey, buddy. You like to try the jigs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Typical. Typical fisherman yeah. doesn't <laughs> want to give up his secrets. That's BS. No, you know, but did I not contact you like the next day? I said, hey, I'm going to get you a hey, bunch more. He was on a roll because Van Dam told him basically that he was stupid. That yeah, day. he Shut did. the F up. Told basically. me I was dumb. Told, yeah, he said, get out of you the know, lobby. You you did call, and them jigs were the most expensive jigs I ever bought. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty bucks a piece for them. Uh, well, speaking, yeah. I, I fifty now. I mean, we happen to know that uh, <laughs> that you are a big time bassin guy, and I want to run this uh, these stats at you, okay? And where's Jen? Jen's gonna want to hear this too. Hope she's watching. Yeah. I hope she's watching. Uh, but... she, she's sitting right here beside me. Okay. This is now. I, you got to We got to get this straight here. All right. Let me. Fi- so, Bill, I got to put my my spectacles on the cheaters for this one. All right. So, in your BASS career, you've won one million two hundred twenty nine thousand one hundred forty five dollars. That's a lot of rubles. Okay. From fish. From fish. From bass. <laughs> BASS. Bass you, fishing. You have caught five thousand three hundred. And 13 pounds of bass. Now, Ryan probed Ronnie Moore for this information. Probed him good. He's a, he's a stat prober. Ryan is, just like Ronnie. And, Ryan, this is what you need to let Bill Lowen and Jennifer Lowen know exactly how many dollars per pound each one of those bass that Bill Lowen catches is. $231 a pound. $231 a pound. 
Bill Owen <laughs> knocking it out of the park. Jen, go ahead on a spending spree. Go ahead, Jennifer, spend that yep. money. Every time he catches a five pounder, that's how we do he it. Got a G. Yeah, not bad, huh? <laughs> But no, honestly, though, we've done this with a lot of people, and that's a really good average. Yeah. It really is, honestly. I mean, what do you think about that? Well, man? you know, like I said, I've always, always prided myself on being um, so consistent. You know, when I started out, um, you know, I had to get I had to get a check. Um, you know, so it was it was very important for me to, to catch them and be consistent and get paid. Um, you know, and I just think that's, you know, partly where where i grew up you know being on this tough ohio river um teaching you how to get bites you know what i mean yeah, that's right um, maybe you're not maybe you're not catching the biggest fish that swim in the lake but um that gone it i'm typically going to get a lot of bites and um you know that's what's helped me be so consistent over the years that's right and we have a new game show you know that we have game shows uh, on here i hate i hate the game shows. well get ready because this one but this one's right up your alley this one is called Always catch a limit with Bill Lowen. All right. All right. So basically, are you ready to play Always Catch a, a Limit? It's a customized game. It's a customized game. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play the first edition ever of Always Catch a Limit with Bassmaster Elite Series angler Bill Lowen, live from his house in Indiana. He's in his house. It's Bill Lowen. In the house? He's in his house. Bill, so what you got to do in the Always Catch a Limit game we got together with the big shots at BASS, and we came up with a few special stray cast rules. You know what I mean? All right? So next year on the Elite Series, you are only allowed four rod and reel combos and four baits. That's it, man. Always catch a limit. Four sticks. I, four baits. I so, wish, I so wish that would happen. What is it, Bill? Lay it down. It's happening mm. right now. Lay down the chronicle. What does well, that mean? If I had, if, I'm going to do my rods first, all right? Um, I'm going to make this tough. Um, I'm going to have a flipping rod. You can plug your sponsors, too. Feel free. I can set this up for you. Right? Yeah. I, I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have a, a 7 6 Lose Custom Speed there Stick flipping rod. There it is. Um, you know, a Team Lose Light. A six eight to one or a seven one to one gear ratio reel. Um, probably gonna go with a yeah, seventeen or twenty pound fluorocarbon on that high seas. Okay. Um, and and my, and my bait of choice um, for that rod is gonna be a green pumpkin strike king tube. Okay. So the seven All six right. with the uh, seventeen to twenty and a, a flipping tube. Absolutely. Is yep. that like the four inch tube? Yeah, four inch or a three and a half, whatever. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Um, you know, and typically for me, I'm always going to Texas rig that bait. Okay. Uh, you know, with a quarter ounce, quarter ounce range tungsten weight, typically a three or a four aught, um, EWG style high boost hook. Um, and, you know, I, and I'm choosing that bait because a tube gets a lot of bites and it doesn't matter where you go in the country. You can catch smallmouth, spotted bass, largemouth bass. On a tube. Um, you know, and and, and, I, and I'm going to be honest with you. They told me I had one bait to use the rest of my career. That is what it would be. It would be a tube. And we're going to go tube. back to the tube. So get, hold, the, hold okay. the thought there. I need three more. All right, so three more combos. All right. My second choice is going to be a, uh, a swim jig rod. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, typically for me, it's a seven, seven foot, six inch swim jig rod. Um you know, it's going to be a loose rod as well, and uh, you know, we're working on one of those right now. Um, I know a lot of people have been asking for one, um, and hopefully uh, hopefully it'll be out um, soon. And then, uh, you know, a high-speed reel on a swim jig rod, um, you know, 7.1 to 1, team lose light. And typically for me, it's always 30-pound um, high seas Grand Slam braid. Um, doesn't matter if the water's clean, dirty. That's always right. You always throw the braid on the swim jig, yeah. don't you? Yes, sir. And then uh, my, my, my... What's the jig? My jig's going to be uh, one of my Bill Owen series, um, you know, swim jigs from Lure Parts Online or our backstroke swim jig. Gotcha. Um, in a quarter ounce, quarter ounce size. Typically for me, it's always a quarter ounce. Um, I like to fish that swim jig as slow as I possibly can um, and keep it in the strike zone as long as I can. And with that quarter ounce, 
um, swim jig, typically tipped with a you know a rage crawl or a structure bug, something like that. Or that but, menace. That uh, menace is a good one. The menace, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and now you got the magnum menace, which is which is a huge plus. But um, typically for me, I like to fish that swim jig as slow as possible, and a quarter ounce jig allows me to do that. Nice. All right, so we got the uh, um, swim jig and the tube. We knew that was coming. What uh, else you got? All right, my third my third rod is going to be a um, just a nuts and bolts rod. You know what I mean? A seven foot heavy, um, you know, high speed team lose light reel again. 17, 20 pound fluorocarbon, and it's going to have a compact spinner bait on it. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just that style spinner bait that I like to fish. You know, we've actually designed one at lure parts as well. Um, that is a compact and a quarter and a three eighths ounce. Um, and you know, you know, what's cool about lure parts is when you buy those components, you can build whatever you want. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Um, so you can tailor, you can tailor the bait to exactly what you like. Um, and that quarter ounce, or I mean that small compact, you know, quarter ounce spinner bait for me is, uh, you know, it's typically a bait that I have tied on, um, all year long. All your life. Yes. Is that, yeah, does that got double Colorado's? Oh a, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my, my favorite my favorite combinations on that is Indiana Colorado or a uh, double Colorado. That would be my two two choices. Indiana on top. Uh yeah, Indiana. Well, on the back. On in the, the back. back. Yeah. Okay. Back. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we got yeah. a tube, we got a spinner bug, uh, and we got the swimmy jig. Swim jig. Yep. What's our number four? My third, my my fourth one is gonna be a cranking rod. Oh, um, yes. You know, and it's 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 gonna be hard to, to pick a rod there. You know what I mean? Because um, I'm gonna need a rod to have a you know a flat sided balsa bait or a square bill, and I know you're wanting me to pick one. <laughs> it's tough. Um, and if I had to pick one, um, I'd have to probably go with my dollar bill from PH Custom Lures. Okay. Um, you know, for the, for the simple fact that. You know, it's a flat-sided balsa bait. You know, you always hear us talk about, you know, flat-sided baits excel in cold water. Um, but we've designed that dollar bill to have just a little more thump. A little bit more. Traditional, little, just a hair more. And what that does is it allows you to feel that bait a little better and allows you to uh, stay in contact and know exactly what that bait's doing. Um, but with that being said, that bait will excel all year long, you know, Um as long as you can just typically, you know, change the colors. You know, typically in the spring, I start out with bright colors, oranges and chartreuses. And as the year progresses on, you start getting into those shad patterns and things like that. Um, so if I had to pick one crankbait, um, it'd definitely be the dollar bill, the flat side. You know, and I'm going to throw that on a uh, Team Lose Light custom uh, wiggle wart rod, um, or they call it a wiggle wart special. Okay, I see um, that. Yeah, and, and, and a big key to that bait is, to me, is to throw it on a, Low speed reel, 5.1 yes. to 1, BB1 Pro um, or BB1Z, you know, would be perfect. And typically always 12 pound fluorocarbon, um, high seas fluorocarbon. There it is. Four sticks. Yeah. Just like the Led Zeppelin song. You know, Four I was sticks. getting nervous after you said that you had been drop shotting more. If you had said spinning <laughs> reel, if you said spinning reel, I was going home. He did not, he did not disappoint. That's, <laughs> pr- that's pretty damn well, fantastic, though think you'd have to put a spinning rod in there no if you didn't have that if you didn't have that too you know what i yeah. mean yeah uh, um, otherwise you know. you're screwed <laughs> that's right <laughs> hey the uh the fact of the matter is man i mean sometimes we overcomplicate things bill and you just kind of simplified it with the four sticks you know we see i'm guilty of it i've had you know 12 rods on my deck you've had tons of rods on your deck but it's overkill most of the time it, it just seems like it. We need to keep it simple, you know, kiss, like they say. Yes, sir. You know, that is that is a, that is very important, what you just said, um, especially for a shallow water angler. Not only a shallow water angler, but it doesn't matter what kind of angler you are. We definitely um, overcomplicate it way too much. Um, you know, and, and you're right. Typically, every time I roll out on the dock, I got 15 rods laying up there. Um, but my goal at the end of the day is to have caught – one bass on every rod you know i mean let's face it i'm a junk fisherman um but i keep it simple um you know i i, I like i always hear guys saying that you know the pros got bait somebody else has got um you know and 95 percent of the true. time when you lift the rod box up we got the same stuff tied on that you got tied on or 
you know, the guy fishing in the open or the, the BFL or whatever that may be, um, you know, typically we're all fishing the same stuff. We're just using them in a different way. You, yeah, and you, you guys, use them you guys might just have something two months earlier than we do. The, and they fish them smarter. That's right. a lot of the deal right there. You know how to use the tools. Bottom line. Bottom line. Back to that tube deal. What was up, Ginch? So they're just so much more efficient. Yeah, yes. a- absolutely. It, 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 the efficient factor. So back to the tube. A lot of people are scared of the tube because of the hookup ratio. You hear people bitching about the hookup ratio, the tube squunching down on the hook. What's How do you remedy that? Is that 4 odd high Hayabusa that you were talking about? Is that the key? Is there a, a special rig? I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going to answer this. <laughs> 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 Come on, you've done like a, a zillion videos on it. So look, I'm 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 gonna answer it because that is a big problem with the tube. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I shouldn't say this, but I love hearing guys say that they hate a tube because they lose too many fish on it, and I'm like, yeah, you know, man, that thing is a fish losing sucker. <laughs> um, but there's a couple things that you can do um, to increase your hookups. What I feel is you know, a hundred percent. Um, and, and one is, you know, it, it, you, you gotta have a good hook in it, you know, and, and I don't care what brand you use, um, as long as it's in that EWG style, um, and you know, three or four out, depending on how big your tube is. But the big key for me, and look, I've fished a tube as long as I can remember. Um, and I know everybody has their tricks of the trade and things that they do, but what works for me day in and day out and has worked, as long as I can remember, is when you when you stick that hook into the head of that tube. I wish I had a tube here um, to show you. The big mistake a lot of guys do when they're rigging soft plastics is, I mean, typically when you rig a soft plastic, you take the eye of the hook and you bury it into the head of the bait, yes, right? Sir. Where you cannot see where you cannot see the hook. Mm-hmm. Okay, correct. For me, I always want the eye of the hook exposed out of the head of the tube, out of the mm-hmm. top. Okay. Mm-hmm. out of the top and the, and the reason i do that is because if you if you take that hook uh, and bury it into the head of that tube you completely fill the gap up in that hook okay that's designed to hold your bait i see okay yep. um so when you leave that eye out the only bit of soft plastic that's sitting in there is sitting is sitting in that gap okay um so what happens now is that bait gets locked into that into that gap that's designed to do that Okay, when you bury that eye of that hook in there, that tube has a tendency to slide down that hook and get balled up. I call that getting tubed. Getting tubed. Um, yep. Yeah, no, no doubt yeah. about it. And Absolutely. I mean, you, you set the hook and you get your bait back and it's all balled up on the hook. Um, the only downfall to that is you go through a lot of tubes because it rips the head out very fast. Right. You know what I mean? Because you're just barely, barely biting into the plastic. Sure. But, um, I'd rather go through a ton of tubes than to lose one, you know? Yeah, I yes. mean, so when did you, when do you think you got turned on to flipping a tube? Like, w- was it the Broward like I, Classic that turned you on to it or prior? No, uh, like, like, so long ago, I, I don't even remember. Um, <laughs> that was your I deal. honestly don't, don't ever remember not fishing with a tube. Yeah, because you know? you've done a Together. ton of videos on, on tubes, but you don't really talk about that rigging deal too much, you know? That, well, the other... The other deal to that is there's two two key deals is, you know, once you rig that through the head and you bring it up through and you te- expose it, okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys like to stick the tip of that hook back into the tube, okay? Mm-hmm. And if you notice when you do that, the natural um, thing of an ED- EWG hook is, is the point comes up and rolls down at a little bit of an angle. Okay. Okay. Yep. And if you stick that hook point into that tube, when you set the hook, it's going to drive right into the tube. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So what I do is I take my pliers and I bend that hook up just a little bit to get it flat. Okay. And I let that hook, and I actually got a hook here in my hand. <laughs> I let that hook lay lay flat against the tube. Okay. Typically, I don't even ever text pose it. I never stick the tip of the hook back in there. Wow. I just bend it enough where it lays perfectly flat on the back of the tube, and you never have to worry about your hook point driving into that tube so one if you leave your eye your hook out to bend that up just a little bit so it lays flat um and i hear guys say well man you're gonna get hung up um all the time you know with that exposed and i very rarely get hung up with that you know i like to bend into the the hook yeah and the other key to that for me is that i always 
I always Texas rig that with a quarter ounce weight, um, typically a range tungsten weight. Okay. And I never, I never peg it. Okay. I know a lot of guys like to peg their weights and things like that, but on a tube, I never peg it for the simple fact of if it's pegged and you snap it up, it just goes straight back to the bottom. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When it's not, when it's not pegged and you snap it up, that sinker separates from that tube and makes that tube dirt jerk and dart left, dart right. And every time you snap it, it's doing something different. Um, I'm always wanting to try to trigger that reaction bite. And uh, that's exactly what you do with the tube rig like that. Yeah, that's good. Beautiful. That was good dirt. Thank you so much really for good. that. I mean, that's that's good stuff right there. I, now, yeah, I don't hear him give that up too much. Is there, is there ever a time if you if you were flipping the tube that you would go to a straight shank hook or no? Never? You know, I, I, I don't... I, I, any of my other flipping, I use a straight shank. But when it comes to the tube, um, that's just always been my confidence thing. You know, I have no confidence in a straight shank in a tube. Yeah, and I, I know I, guys yeah. do. And they and they cut the tube and things like that. But yeah, um, for me, it's always been that EWG style. So what about I, you've been flipping the tube forever. Did you ever mess around with those uh, Shaw Grigsby hooks back in the day with the clip and all that and everything? Yeah, I think I did when I was like six years old. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Once you become a man. Yeah. Yeah. Then you graduated Stop to doing the that EWG. Stuff. Well, you know, you know, that's a good hook too, and it's it's designed to hold the head of that tube up, right. just like we talked about. Yeah. Uh, with that hook, you know, for years there, I remember guys buying that hook just to steal the clip off of it. Yeah, because um, it's still bunched you know, up it, on me on that hook. Absolutely. I mean, right, right. You know, so... Um, you know what? At the end of the day, it's all about what you have confidence in. You know what I mean? I, um, I got a new got bait. You got confidence in it. Yeah. I got a new bait that I got confidence in. I'm glad you said that. Right. Well, not the jube again. Well, it's two. It's a combination of Bill's two favorite baits. The jig and the tube. I call it the jube. It's the jig plus the tube <laughs> equals the jube. Now, this thing is amazing. You, you laugh. Oh, do laugh, Bill Lowen. But may I tell you that this bait just catches them. It's a limit getter. It's a little... 3 16th finesse jig with a tube on the back of it. And it's just, it, it acts crazy wild. I mean, you, you could use the, the little Strike King, the power, or the power tube, or whatever you got. Dude, it's amazing. You can even reel it slowly with your rod tip high, and it does this. Right? It's the jube. Have you ever thrown See, a jube? You're, you're not supposed to talk about things like that. I, I'm I've a bass fishing put... talk show host. I just do that. Look. I've never, I've never put a tube on the back of a jig like that, but I've done very well on, you know, here at, at home on the Ohio River and places like that where I take a spider grub mm -hmm. and break off the curly legs on it and turn it around and put it on a jig. Uh -huh. Okay, basically the same, basically the same exact thing you're doing, uh -huh. um, but using the, you know, the body of a spider grub versus a tube. That's the spider jube. Dig it. Yeah, that's what. There jube. you go. This, yep. the friendly neighborhood spider jube. <laughs> yes. That's in that southern Indiana one. No, but it's good. That's a, I mean, that's, seriously, that's like my new finesse jig. I always got a tube on it now. For some reason, I'm just... Nice. I'm smoking them on it. It's good. Uh, let's talk about the Ned Rig, dude. I see you throwing a Ned Rig more. Like, that's the deal. But you got to beef your hook on that Ned you're throwing. So you're, you've, you've succumbed to the Ned. Well, you know what? I think if you don't have a Ned Rig tied on, you're uh, <clears throat> definitely missing the boat, you know? Yeah. And... Uh, you know, Strike King's come out with some phenomenal um, Ned Rig stuff here um, since I cast. And I tell you what, man, um, I, I really believe if you don't got a, a Ned Rig bait of some style tied on, um, you're definitely missing out. You know, and you mentioned that, you know, I'm using one with a little stouter hook in it and things like that. Dude, I'm just, I'm not into the, the game of getting a bite and not putting that fish in the boat. You know what I mean? I don't want to worry about a little light hook. Now, look, you can't. You can't overpower that bait. You know what I mean? You don't want to put a big, giant, crazy hook in it. But we've put a, uh, a big enough hook in that lure parts online head that you still get a really good hook up with a spinning rod and things like that that you don't have to worry about it. Um, but, you know, a, a thing for me that I've done here in the last couple of years is, you know, they, they, they call it power netting or whatever it may be, is, you know, I'm fishing that, that bait on a bigger head so I can fish it down deeper. You know, St. Right. Lawrence River places like that when you see them on the graph um you just bomb a five sixteen ounce down there on them and typically they'll eat it you know and are you throwing uh, it on casting tackle on our spinning rod yeah spinning spinning rod 
spinning rod, you know, 10 pound braid, eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Um, you know, it goes back to what we just talked about. Same baits that everybody else is using. Um, maybe fish them just a little different. Yeah. A little smarter. Just a little bit smarter. Hey, um, how about, uh, have you ever, uh, you've never been arrested, right, Bill? Um, not that I can remember. Not that you can remember, uh, but <laughs> you, you may have been interrogated before. Like uh, maybe a family member in, in, unintentionally interrogated you, or, or back in the day your parents interrogated you for something you, you may have or may have not have done. Yeah, I'm sure that happened. Well, well you're going to get interrogated right now. Are you ready? Great. This Can't is wait, man. People's Court, the interrogation of Bill Owen. Bill Owen, we need you to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you bass fishing gods. You agree? There it is. <laughs> I'm good. Yes. Hold on, I got to get smart. Let me get smart. See, I'm a, I got really smart right there. Bill, a bait that you have lost at one point of your fishing career that you wish you had back. Oh, man. Uh, if I had to pick one that I lost in my career, would be it's going to be some type of uh, handmade style bait. Um, you know, there's... I live right here in this area where I live. There's four or five guys that build, build custom, you know, balsa baits. And uh, when I grew up, I didn't know any different. I mean, if you wasn't throwing a balsa bait, you, <laughs> you wasn't going to catch one. You know what I mean? And I can I remember do. back in the day, I can remember back in the day, you'd buy 10 of them, and one of them would be the one. The one. Um, oh. And you'd go swimming or go after it with the net, whatever you had to do. And <laughs> Climb a boy, tree. I have some of yeah, if I could have some of those old baits back, boy, I would sure, sure like to have them back. Mine's a Bagley Balsa B3 in yellow perch, YP. Right. Oh, I miss that girl so much. I miss her. <laughs> 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 hey, who's the first TV personality in bass fishing that ever inspired you? You know, as a kid, like, who'd you like to go home and watch their fishing show? Um... You know, I think when I was a kid, it didn't matter what fishing show <laughs> right. I watched. You know what I mean? It, it, it just, as long as it was fishing or hunting or whatever it may be. But, you know, I think the, the person that inspired me the most was um, Denny Brower. Was you Denny. Know, it was, I mean, naturally, naturally, you know, I got to give big, huge credit to my father because he was a tournament fisherman and he drug me along and he kind of, you know, got it in my blood. But to, to go to that next level, you know, um, dude, it was Denny Brower, man. I can He's remember standing on the banks. I can remember standing on the banks of Muddy Creek here on the Ohio River saying, dude, I want to be like Denny Brower someday. You I know, talked I to Denny so today. Cool he, it's, I, just, understand. I thought you were going to say Orlando Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> like how crazy it is when my phone rings and then I see Denny Brower. That to me just makes no sense whatsoever. You just you just hit decline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Always. you do, like you do when I call you. You know, Out of fear. <laughs> well, but, you know, you know what's this is really this is actually really a cool <clears throat> question that you asked that because you know growing up it was always man I want to be like Danny. He had a flipping stick all the time and a jig. And, yep. Dude, he would just wreck him, you know. And uh, you know, three or four years before Danny retired, um, him and I were actually practice partners. Um, you know, awesome. we shared information wow. together and, and, and Jen and Shirley, you know, become really good friends. And, um, you know, it was really cool to, you know, kind of, that was your idol growing up and then to become practice partners, you know what I mean? But, you know, when two guys that have the same style of fishing, that's um, insane. You, you know, it was so, it was so crazy because like, if I had an area that I was on, I'm <laughs> you know, and maybe he needed a fish, you know, he would run to that spot sight unseen knowing that, you know, just because I told him he had the confidence that, that he would catch him, you know what I mean? And that was so, I mean, how do you describe that or how cool that is? Exactly. To, to, it's surreal. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, uh, and then he retired and, you know what I mean? It was kind of, you know, bittersweet, you know, he, you know, and I, and at the classic that one year that he retired, I got the, you know, thank him for everything he'd done and, you know, congratulated him or whatever. But, um, you know, it was just kind of cool to come full circle to, you know, become a practice partner with your fishing hero. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's, that's insane. That's absolutely nuts. <laughs> it's like, okay, so here you are as a kid flipping on the banks of the Ohio saying, I want to be Denny Brower. 
and then boom, you're practicing with Denny Brower. <laughs> that's that's, right, that's, right. that's that's what they talk about things in life. Everything happens for a reason. Thank you, Bill Lowen. That happened for a reason. That's that's the deal right there. Pretty freaking cool. Pretty cool, man. Yeah, we got Denny coming on uh, next month. That I just uh, scheduled Denny today. He's coming on November 20 of next month. November. So I'm looking forward to that. We're going to play game shows. Awesome. Absolutely. Just all game Absolutely. shows. Absolutely. Denny Brower's game show. Whole time. But anyway, let's go back Let's go back to interrogate. Yes. Yes. Right, we had that sappy moment for a minute. Let's get back to the real. <laughs> let's get back to the real deal. We got sentimental He's for a minute. He's still the only one I get nervous calling, too. Brower? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. It's like just yeah. in your gut. You're like, oh. I get nervous. Yeah. What's he gonna do? He's the warden. He, he's like the godfather. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. He put a horse head in your bed, yeah. Bill Lowen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Say something yeah. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's Bill Lowen's guilty pleasure? What's your guilty pleasure, Bill Lowen? Man, I've never. Been, I mean, what the heck is even a guilty pleasure? Yeah, like what's just something that's like what's like you're like you you're, you're doing it, but you just know you shouldn't be doing like it. Like Rocky Mountain oysters or something. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Fried. I mean, I'm, I don't, I, I honestly, truly don't have one of those. Okay, you know well, let's, I mean? let's rephrase this. Let's put it in all a right. different direction. I think we can all relate to this. Uh, what's a food that you just always seem to eat way too much of? Like, what's your guilty pleasure as a food? Like, that's everything. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Come on, pick something. Is Jennifer make something like good or I mean I'm all good. Yeah, you know like, what I mean? Like, like special. Like, like everything. You're like what's special? Uh, Come on, what is it? What's a gas man, station thing? You go into a gas really, station. I, I don't eat nothing from a gas station. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> really? Know? Come on, um, Bill, pick a damn meal. Never had a take five. Leave him alone, Ryan. Come on. Uh, absolutely. I mean I'm dude, I'm a I'm a meat man. You know what I mean? I like Never. Steaks and venison and, you know, um, if I had a downfall, that's what it would be. You know what I mean? I just eat way too much meat. Way too much meat. There's nothing wrong with a carnivore. That's what God right, wanted. Right. God wanted us to eat nothing but meat. Remember that. PETA. Right, exactly. His guilty pleasure is meat. His guilty pleasure is meat. That is right. More meat. Hey, what's a, <laughs> hey, what's a song that makes you feel good, Bill Lowen? A feel-good song. <laughs> what's a a feel good song. Yes, Bill Lowen's feel good song. Uh, dude, I, I don't I don't have a clue. Oh come on, I mean, Bill. James Brown uh, got she, one within the Jennifer, title. Where's Jennifer at? Can she please come play this with you? She's sitting right here beside me. Jennifer, me could like you I help your husband, kids. please? He's doing horrible they want you at to this. Help me for my feel good song. Yeah, come on. You, she spends <laughs> some time with you. I lost on that one. Yeah, yeah, she just said y'all are lost on that. One. Well, we're lost. Like you don't have a mute, like a favorite song. You know, I, I really don't. You got a, a song? National nice anthem. Yeah. Star Spangled well, Banner. I mean, you know, the theme from Duke of Hazard. <laughs> you know, I, I come. I, That's true. You know, my you know, typically over the years, my kids have always chose my song that I come out to for the classic. You okay. Know what I mean? So help us uh, out. You know, and, and, you know, if I had to pick a song, I guess, you know, now I come out on the stage to proud to be an American. Okay, you know I mean? there it is. Uh, there we go. You know, and, and let's face it, dude, the world's crazy right now. Um, you know, and how, how much prouder could you be to live in the United States of America? You know, and, and I always try to, you know, give respect to where it's due and, you know, our armed service people and our police officers and 100 percent you know they don't get enough respect you know what i mean let's face it dude i don't want to do that job you don't want to do that job um and we'll never be able to thank them enough for what they do um you know so that's why i've chose that song the last couple of years to uh come out to just to you know kind of maybe try to give back or give thanks for feel good song everybody. right? everybody's Absolutely. feel good song it's everybody yep. Yep. feel good song right that's there it is boom See, we just have to dig. This is get to know Bill Lowen. <laughs> thanks, Jennifer, for getting that out of him. <laughs> he said thanks. <laughs> hey, uh, what's the biggest misconception that people have about professional bass fishermen? The biggest misconception. Um, I mean, there's a lot of those, but I don't, I don't truly know. You know what the biggest? You know, I, I would have to say that the biggest misconception is that. We just get to go fishing every day. You know what I mean? 
Um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I mean, let's face it, at the end of the day, it's a job. And uh, sure it's the, it's the hardest thing that I've ever, that I've ever tried to do. You know, before I did this full time, um, I was a flooring installer. I installed everything but ceramic tile. Um, so, dude, I know what it's like to bust my butt, to pay the bills, to keep the lights on. Um, and uh, I know what it's like to work hard. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, by far, the hardest thing I've ever tried to do. And, and you know what? Not so much physically, but it's the emotional roller coaster ride. Um, it sure is trying, is, yeah. That is so that that is so stressful. You know, what I mean, one day you you catch them good, you're on top of the world. The next day you um, you don't catch them, and it's just you know what I mean. You're down in the dumps. Um, but you know what? I'm very fortunate that my family gets to travel all over the country with me, and, and we camp. And um, you know, when I'm having a bad day and I hit the dock, and the kids come running to the boat and give dad a hug, um, that's pretty much all that matters. But um, you know, back to you know what's the biggest misconception is I think that. You know, everybody just sees us fishing every day and, um, you know, they, they, you, you, they don't see all that behind the scenes stuff, the, the, the windshield time, the right. uh, time away from home. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm all that. that my family, yeah. that my family gets to go with me, but a lot of guys on the tour are away from their family. You know what I mean? You, mm -hmm. you miss birthdays, you miss anniversaries, you miss funerals. Um, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I, I just think that. Um, you know, like I said, it's the hardest thing I've ever tried to do. And, uh, and I never take it for granted. You know, oh. I mean, there's a hundred people waiting in line to take my spot. They um, will. If you're and, not careful. Uh, yeah, they, absolutely. I'm, and I want, wait, I want to go back and say your daughter has one of the coolest names in the history of all names, by, by the way. And right. I, so it's heaven backwards, right? It is. It's, it's Nevaeh. Nevaeh. Absolutely. I didn't want to say it wrong. Nevea, that is so cool. That is awesome. Right. Yeah, right. right. It's like, how did that come about? And, that was dead to be Jen. In Chinese, in, in Chinese, that stands for the devil. Oh, whoa! <laughs> Wait, hey now. <laughs> Wait, hey. Took a turn. Nice <laughs> question. Even though it's heaven spelled backwards, sometimes she's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Both sides of it. it's like that movie yeah. Animal House. There's the angel yep. and the devil on each shoulder. Right. Right. You know, actually, actually, Jennifer's brother um, came up with that. Um, when Jen, when when Nevaeh was born, so uh, kind of got to give him credit for that. Yeah, that's that's outstanding. The coolest name in the history of of girls' names. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good one. Hey, um, does Bubba like whiskers yet or no? Or are they are they still like whiskers? Do what? <laughs> 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 Scratch that question. Hey, now. All right. So, if you had a do over tournament that you could do over, what would that do over derb be out of your history, mm. bass fishing career? My do over, man, I got a lot of those. <laughs> well, know? pick one. Um, my do over tournament of this season would have been Lake Gunnersville. Okay. And the, and the reason I picked Lake Gunnersville is because, you know, I had a really good event there. I think I finished 15th or something like that. Um, the third day, I kind of run out of fish. And um, I had an area that I hadn't been to yet tournament because I'd only had a couple, um, couple bites off of it. And I just didn't feel like the quality was there. Um, so I went with the safe bet and ran up the river where I'd been catching them and um, you know, I only ended up catching about 15 pounds that day. Well, right after the event was over, um, I went to those fish because I took the kids fishing. And uh, I had my son, Fisher, and Jen, and Nevaeh, and my chase, or my, my nephew Chase with me. And um, we pulled up there, and they're like, hey, Dad, what do we need to throw? I'm like, <laughs> white swim jig, white swim jig, spinnerbait, here you go. And the next thing I know, in like 30 minutes, their best five weigh like 25 pounds. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Lighten them up. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, you know, the first one they catch is a four, then they catch a five, then they catch a six, and I'm just like, how stupid are you? Do you know over. I mean? um, to, to be so close. And, and that's the thing a lot of people don't realize is sometimes you are so close and you miss it by this much. It's nuts, um, man. You know, I mean, I was one pocket over. 
I can see the spot and I didn't go to it. Um, so that thing about listening to your gut, there it is. It didn't work. It, it didn't work that time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Well, you're going to go back there. You get a do-over. So, yeah. The yeah. kids got to have yeah, a good time. That was what was supposed to happen, I guess. You know, they had a they had an absolute ball. <laughs> hey, um, in your uh, in your express boat, how many rod and reel combos do you carry with you on average? Um, I can carry about I can I carry about 25 in there, but you could probably fit about 40. <laughs> so you got a, you got a couple dozen with you though at all times. Oh, absolutely. Ready to attack. Okay. That seems to be about, yep. most guys keep about two dozen, don't they? Most, yeah, a couple, most, two, three dozen. A couple, two, three dozens on there. Hey, what's the biggest lie you've ever told to go fishing so you could get out uh, of something to go fishing? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I ever had to lie to go fishing. Oh, gosh, I know? have. I have. Oh, I, do. Um, I called off work, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, uh. I've just been very fortunate when it comes to the outdoors, whether it's fishing or hunting. Um, it's uh, like I said, I'm just fortunate to, to be able to do what I've done. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I've had to call. I mean, I'm not going to kid you. I've called off work many times to go fishing and then come the next day with just, you know, the, racco- raccoon, the raccoon eyes. eyes, you know, right. Exactly. I was homesick on the couch. Oh, so the that sun was coming through either. the window. <laughs> there was three foot of sun out. I don't think I'm making it to work. It's not happening. <laughs> hey, uh, what's the most awkward sports show question that you've ever been asked by someone at a sports show? An attendee. Boy, boy I, can't, I can't remember. It's probably been from you or something. <laughs> Good chance. <laughs> It could be. It could possibly be. Like, what's a surefire sign that if somebody comes up and asks you a question about fishing at a sports show that you're in trouble? Like, or is it like, hey, uh, Bill, you want to see these pictures of my yeah, fish? got to be the phone pics. Yeah, the phone pics. And then, and then <laughs> next thing you know, you you're back to 2014 Check out. checking out their, their Colorado uh, vacation with their family. You know what I mean? Right, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, that you know what? Cool. That's, uh, that's, um, territory it is know? absolutely uh, but you... go ahead no I, it absolutely is but i don't people out oh. there i don't care who you are nobody wants to see your family vacation from the uh what's the place in colorado where mm-hmm. they go the grand canyon yeah. you know from 2008 in colorado you know whatever show me a few eight six pound bass and i'm good to go you know what i mean let's right, be real, let's right, be real exactly. Bill we got to keep bass fishing real <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. Well, you know what? You know, you never know who's a fan of the sport. You never know who's a fan of you. Um, and uh, I just, man, if somebody wants to talk, I'm going to talk. I, me too. All yep. day. All day, Bill. I will talk until I'm blue in the face, and especially if it's about fishing, talking all damn day. <laughs> There's no, <laughs> no doubt about it, man. No doubt about it. Hey, uh, when you were a kid, and no disrespect to, to Jennifer whatsoever, but who was your your teen celebrity crush like who is your crush as a kid <laughs> um man i it, yeah you guys ask questions that most people can't even answer no it's not true um like no no i mean i don't i don't i don't think i had a teen celebrity crush no you know Still. um and 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 you never watched Saved by the Bell? Dude, I'm not. Jennifer's over here saying, tell him you're a weird person. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm not a weird person. It's just that, dude, when I was growing up, high, middle school, high school, whatever that may be, dude, all I wanted to do was go fishing or hunting. I, know, I, fishing uh, and girls. That's right. all I thought dude, about. Dude. My buddies were partying and carrying on, and I'm just like, look, man, I got to go. I got to get up early in the morning. Um, you know what I mean? So I do. I still yeah, like them three company saying, girls. I, I wasn't, yeah. yeah, wasn't an average kid, you know. Um, <laughs> well, you did well, Bill. You know, I was. The, I like to play in the sandbox and eat the dirt. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I did that too. I ate the glue too, actually. So as long as you didn't do that, <laughs> you're doing good, man. Hey, um, Bill, dude, it's been an amazing time with you, man. I mean, we, we, we've, we've learned, we've, we've had you on this show, as we learned at the beginning, four or five times, and I think I learned more about Bill Lowen this time than any other time. Yeah. I really did. Well, that just means you did your job and you asked 
Good question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's why. That's why you're like. What did you say? Number five. Number five. Number in five. The world or something. Galaxy yes. in the galaxy. Thank you. That's there you go. Yeah. Yeah. We jumped up for. I rank. mean, you just, you just, you don't just get that for asking just some oddball questions, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, who, come on. Who else? Where else are you gonna find Not out? Not just Bill, oddball questions, yeah. but we have to have something more also. Yeah, like Bill Lowen's yeah. teen celebrity yeah. crush. Where else are you gonna? You're not gonna get that on Bassmaster for crying out right. loud. And he didn't have one. That's <laughs> yeah. the most amazing yeah, answer. Yeah. It didn't ever. even. It was an amazing answer. Like I was expecting him to say, like you know, like Marianne Martin or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what he was gonna say, <laughs> but. <laughs> Bass and gal. He, he liked the bass and gals. <laughs> but, Bill, 2020, man, uh, looking forward to you kicking some butt, plain and simple. Going to be an amazing year. Well, you know what? It's, uh, you know, as long as I've been doing this, you know, the 2019 season was, uh, you know, it started out, nobody really knew what was going to happen, and it ended up being one of the most amazing years that I can ever remember. You know what I mean? It made me, it made it, it felt like Oh six when I very first started, you know, you know, we had a, a fresh, yeah. we had a fresh, we had a fresh start and we had a bunch of new guys that, that nobody really knew, which I, I believe that has changed by now. And, nice. uh, you know, the atmosphere is, is unbelievable. Um, I can't, you can't even put it into words how, respectful the guys are and how grateful they are to have the opportunity to be there you know what i mean and, and live their dream um you know we've all got a dream and these new guys have got the opportunity to chase it and they're 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 so grateful and so respectful for that and uh it's just like i said it's just a totally different atmosphere and dude they're hammers you know what i mean absolute you've hammers. seen you've watched you've watched the weigh-ins and um they're the, the future of the sport and um Nobody can say that they can't catch them because, man, they hammer them every time we go. It's they do. no yeah. different. Here, here's it's, the it's, thing. It's, it's, it's They got guys like you and Mark Menendez, guys have been around for, for a while to look up to, to teach them the art of proper bassing. Are, are you following me? Because Absolutely. Because, like, I'm sure you've had, like, I know. Uh, I know. Seth was excited that you were coming on the on the show. The younger guys in bass fishing, like Bill Lowen, is the shallow water guy on the elites. You are that guy. That's pretty cool, dude. It's pretty right. Cool. Well, you know what? That's that's just always been my game, and that's probably going to be the game until until I retire. You know so, what I mean? So I ask um, you this. I ask you this. We've been on a campaign where. Um, it's the proper Bassin Man campaign, and it kind of came about where one of your heroes, Denny Brower, um, was was called up and was talking to Seth Fighter because Denny's one of Seth's heroes too, and 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 Denny was talking about the proper Bassin Man, and I think we all have our own conception of what a proper Bassin Man is, and I would like to hear from you, Bill Lowen, what a proper Bassin Man is. Give me, give me. Boy, you know, you, you you could get crucified here for whatever you say. You know what I mean? No, no, not you um, can't. But but but, I mean, I feel like the proper bassin guy is gonna be that guy that one is is not gonna do anything that he wouldn't want done to himself. Thank you. Golden you know, rule. whether that be golden rule, whether that whether that be on or off the water. Um, you know, and I think that's got lost in this sport. You know what I mean? I think, I think a lot of people think it's okay to cut somebody off or show up on their hole or, um, you know, hole jump them or whatever that may be. Um, I Not always okay. look at it as don't do anything to somebody that you wouldn't want done to yourself. And you know, when you're on the water, when you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, um, nobody has to call you out and tell you yeah. because you know. Remember that gut right. thing? Um, it's there too, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you get that bad um, feeling yeah. in your gut. You know, so so the proper guy would be the guy that doesn't, you know, just treats people with respect on and off the water, um, and 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 passes it on. You know, what I mean, I'm I'm so huge on taking the time out to teach somebody or help somebody. Yep. You know, when I was growing up somebody always did that for me, whether it was hunting, fishing, changing the brakes on a car, whatever, whatever the heck it was, man. 
and and had they not done that, you and I would definitely not be talking right now. Um, exactly. Because because they passed it on to me the, the fishing, forward. the the outdoor life. Pay it forward. Um, that's why, dude. I get so much of a thrill out of helping people out, teaching them. You know, just like tonight when we talked about that too. I didn't have to talk about that, but <laughs> somebody out there is going, "Oh my gosh." Dude, I'm going to be able to catch him on a Tuesday. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, yeah. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Thank you. And I've just been, you know, I get such a thrill out of that. You know, and, and I don't know if you know this or not, or maybe seen the article that Bass just did. And, you know, this year, every every time that I made the Saturday cut, I picked a kid out of the audience and give him a Bassmaster membership. It's amazing. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, when I was young, I loved to look at Bassmaster Magazine. And the, and the things that you learn in that magazine, um, you take with you for life. You sure um, do. And if I could, if I could, you know, out of, I don't know how many kids got them this year, 10 kids maybe. Um, if one of them becomes the next Bill Owen, um, I've done my job. That's you right. I mean? um, That's right. So I guess that perfect bassing guy is... Just what we just talked the about. Proper you know what I mean? The proper bassman. Perfect. The, thank the, you. The family man. The the. You know what I mean? Yep, um, I do. I mean, look, dude, life's too short. And at the end of the day, this is just bass fishing. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly yep. right. Um, Let's and, remember that. And it, 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 that's 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 the that's the truth of it. Um, yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, we love it. We love to go out there. But at the end of the day, it's just bass fishing. Sure Don't. Is. Don't steal candy from your kids to catch one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, Thank you. It just, it ain't, it ain't worth it, man. And when I see these guys have these knockdown drag out fights and, and look, I've had some on the water and it's just like, and guys are like, man, you got in an argument today on the water. Um, but you know, when, after the end of that deal or the argument or whatever, it's typically those guys that are coming back to me and apologize and saying, you know, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. Um, but you know, I mean, you're gonna have that. But just it as, long as, you win. That <laughs> as long as you win, as long as you win the <laughs> argument. <laughs> but it's Bill, let's put it this way: you are a proper bassin man, and you are an ambassador of the sport of bass fishing. You you achieved the goal, buddy. Yeah. You you did it, man. Thank you so much. Well, and hey, are. and hey, you're not you're not gonna have to look. Far. You said somewhere out there someone's going to take that tube tip. Right here. I'm never exposing my tube ever again. Right. I just learned that. I think all well, of us kind of, yeah. Ever, so thanks if, for if that. You'd ever, if you'd ever call me up to take me fishing. Um, Let's go. Yeah, what are you, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> I barely I barely could get a jig from you. I sure the heck <laughs> ah! Oh, give me a break. <laughs> hey. We gave you a satchel of jigs. If you need more, we'll get you some oh, jigs. Oh, boy. Look at you, Bill. Um, <laughs> but let's go fishing. I got weekends. Come on down. <laughs> Come on down, Bill. I'll take you to the river, and yeah, Ryan will we'll take you to Lake Michigan. Yeah. Nice. Go with me, though. You don't want to go with that. Well, you oh, no, Bill wants to, to go there. fishing with me. Believe he me. Might flip I'm a that. lot more fun than you are. Yeah, just, That's just run the trolling bottom line. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What is going on here? Bill Lowen, thank you again so much, and we wish you the best of luck in 2020, and, and, and the best to you and your family, of course, man. Thank you. Well, so man, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to come hang out with you guys, man. Dude, anytime. Thank and, you. And just start taking my phone calls again, and we'll have you on more. <laughs> well, you got to call more than like every six or seven years. <laughs> I, <got it. laughs> I won't say that word again, but you Set know what you are, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bassmaster Elite Series professional, Bill Lowen, right there. Thanks, Bill. Peace. Take care, Bill. See you guys later. Thanks. Bill Lowen gave awesome. up the gave up the dirt. Yeah, that's man. good stuff. We got uh, two doing it all wrong. Tube tricks, spinner bait tricks, all kinds of tricks. Four sticks tricks, all hey, the tricks. Danny, I, I like I was wa like you were looking at something. I like, was just, I was just trying to take it all in, Pat. He's yeah, exposing I, his juice. Yeah. I was just kind of thinking about. Yeah, it, I know. saw your eyes like I, I, taking I, his juice. Yeah, they they I, were I, they were <laughs> drifting. I was staring at the corner, just thinking about how he does everything. You know. Yeah. Trying to, yeah, I saw you looking at Bob Marley over yeah, there. Like you were Bill staring Owen at my Bob things. Marley poster for about twenty five minutes straight. Yeah, kind of. I'm tired, man. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about Bill, juice. Bill, Bill was putting too much on us. No, that was a that, that was, was great. A, uh, that was great, man. Like he really gave us a lot of information. Hello, Bill Lowen, man. Hello, information. He's a good fisherman. 
a yeah. ton, dude. And I and it's I great I seriously have about three more pages of notes that I didn't go through. Sheesh. That with Bill Owen. But we got we got the next time. Now that he takes my phone calls. Of mental notes. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of mental, aren't you? <laughs> the, uh, but speaking of all this, and speaking of all that, and look at this, and look at that, it's time to give away the uh, grand prize line and lure conditioner, BTS deal, plus added stuff. You ready? Winner. Oh, yeah. Who is it, Dan? Who could it be? We have Mitch Carpenter. Way to go, Mitch. Mitch Carpenter. Mitch Carpenter. Yeah. Mitch. Way to go, man. <laughs> you get JP's personal staff. She's supplying all yes. of it. You will never burn your thumb on your spool again. Yes. Now, don't get... JP's bottles are empty. He uses it a lot. He does. Smoothest reels out there, though. Yeah, that's true. And marinating steaks. Like butter. <laughs> like butter. So, Carpenter... What's his name again? Mitch. Mitch Carpenter. Old Mitch Carpenter. Hey. Boom. Uh, boom. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, that was oh, I was feeling <laughs> saucy for 0.2 <laughs> seconds. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? So here's what's going on. We are off next week mm-hmm. uh, because it's Halloween, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. What happened? Look over here. I was talking to Danny. Oh. I, was t- I was telling hey, Danny. You don't need to know. They want to know. Oh, hey, how you doing, Yeah, tell, everybody? tell the you camera. Them, you guys are hiding them. things from me, man. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, Danny, we're off next <laughs> week. Yep. There. <laughs> we're off next week. <laughs> uh, and we're coming back on what is it? The November sixth. That sounds right. Sounds right. Six, six, thirteen, and twenty. Yeah. I believe is what we're doing. Yeah, in one week intervals. Trees. Yes. Yeah. Three November shows, but next week on the thirtieth. You see how I got excited? Next week, yeah. when it's time 29. to change, you got to rearrange. Uh, the Ike Live Halloween special, October thirtieth. Yeah. On the uh, Ike Live station. And they're having us on? On Channel Ike. Yeah. Actually, I am going on as uh, Ryan Whitaker. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm cool. Going, I'm going on as Ryan Whitaker's jig. <laughs> what are you going to do? Make snarky and comments? And how? Yes. A snarky. <laughs> That's an amazing Are you going to be word. snarky? <laughs> isn't, I think, I think, isn't snark like a... a <laughs> it, what's the name of that little um, uh, uh, creature in Star Wars bar? Isn't there a snark? snark? snark. Isn't there a snark? In oh. Star Wars, he had the little gobliny head. You know what I'm talking about? He was a little yeah. small guy. He came in two different color outfits, br- red and blue. If you remember from the Star Wars action figures, red and blue. Jabba's little guy. Yeah, they're Jabba's little guy. Uh, Andy has all my Star Wars figures right over there on the other side of the deal, right there. So, Danny Mohan, you got a derb? Oh, <laughs> uh, Sunday. Yep. Sunday. Yep. Okay, and that is at the Lake Michigan, Benton Harbor, ben- Saint Joe River, Saint Joe River, River. Yeah. Benton Harbor. Yep. Pure Michigan. Oh yeah. It's pure Michigan, yep. and. Next week on the 29th, we're not doing a live show, but we're doing um, Stray Cass uh, College Gone Wild we series are, starts. Yeah, we are indeed. We, uh, we're going to contract a special guest. We don't know who yet, but oh. we got a couple in sight. Yeah, we, Are well, you guys going to go sand, like wall to wall in here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's going to well, be amazing. We're going to have a full lineup. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But no, basically what it's going to be is Danny is going to be interviewing different college uh, anglers from across the country. Um, a little uh, 10, 15 minute yeah, uh, quick little interview, interview, 20 minute, could go an hour and a half. Depends on how good it is. You know, yeah, Ginge, you're just going to have to show me how to shut the machine yeah. off. Yeah. But the, uh, but, I don't know about all that. But we're going to, that is going to be, we're starting that next week and it will be available on our YouTube as what do you call that? A playlist. It'll be an additional playlist. It'll be a separate channel. It's an additional playlist. Yeah, you'll see it. Bingo. <laughs> it's a uh, stray cast gone wild college edition. College gone. Yep. College bass. College, gone, college wild. gone wild. College bass. I just made all wild. that. Yeah, I just made all that crap up right there. But yeah, Danny's doing a little deal. College Did- bassman gone wild. Yep. <laughs> I won't be watching that. Hey, anyway, <laughs> it's been crazy. It's been wild. It's been a bass fishing talk show. We're number five. Man, this song always gets me in a mood to drive home. Number five in the galaxy, upon reflection, where I can see in my eyes the pale golden eyes of dawn, the eyes of March, the eyes of the storm. We have weathered to number what, guys? Five! Five. Five. Five out of five, man. Five. Five. One, two, three, 
four. Five. It's kind of like getting seventh in a ten-boat derby. Could have been worse. Eight. 